Hey guys, it's Joe Tommaso and thanks for joining me for this edition of the 15 Minutes with True Crime podcast. This is the second half of our interview with Sam Redman, who is an inmate serving his time at the R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego, California. We got some really good feedback on the first half of the interview, so we wanted to get this right out to you. Not only was Sam telling us the details of his crime, but he was filling us in on his life in prison these last 21 years. You're not going to hear that on shows like Lock Up, the individual going into their crime and life afterwards. There is also going to be a product review in this episode from our friends at Wear and Hair, so you'll want to check that out. If you want to keep this show going and you want to watch it get better, please donate to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. Again, that is paypal.me slash J-O-E T-O-M-A-S-O. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestion, or if there's anyone you'd like to see me interview, please send me an email at insidetherazorwire at gmail.com. Again, that email is insidetherazorwire at gmail.com, or you can snail mail me at P.O. Box 162, West Haven, Connecticut 06516. And now, as promised, here's the rest of Sam's story. Hello? This is Global Tech. You have a prepaid call from Sam an inmate at the R.J. Donovan Correctional Facility, San Diego, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using Global Tech Link. Hey, Sam. Hi. So just for the listeners that are listening right now, I'm speaking to Sam Redmond. This is a continuation of the last call that I just had because we got cut off. Sam was explaining that you know he's doing two life without parole uh, sentences plus 50 years. We were just going into what happened when he found out that his mom had come home from the hospital before she passed away. Okay, Sam, I'm back to you. Okay, so the counselor came and got me from work. And he told me that he had a call from my sister and that I needed to call home. Once I talked to my sister, she she had told me that my mom was released from the hospital. She had complications from Alzheimer's and she was pretty sick. And they brought her home so she could pass away at home um, on hospice. And um, that really broke me. I was talking to my uh, It's kind of bothering me right now as I talk about it. Um, I to talk to my sister, and I was sobbing in the counselor's office. Mm-hmm. No privacy here. They have another. I have a correctional officer sitting right across from me while I'm hearing this news. Mm-hmm. So impersonal, and I just wanted to be there for my mom. Just wanted to hold her, uh, like she did for me. She took care of me for twenty years. Sam, years. when when the officers were telling you this. I mean, this is a lot different than a family member telling you. Did you see any compassion from the guards or anybody there? You know what? I had these guards here. I have my counselor here in the building, and a lot of the guards on the yard there are so good to me. I've been at this prison for eight years, Mm -hmm. so a lot of the guards know me, and they seen something was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And one of the guards actually walked me back to my building and made sure that I was allowed to use the phone. Mm. And for the next seven days, the officers allowed me to use the phone whenever I wanted. And a lot of the inmates, they seen, they don't, you, you don't see a lot of people crying in prison. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I, I've been clean and sober for a long time. And I had, a, I had an urge to drink. I wanted to get drunk again. And alcohol is readily available in prison, just like mm-hmm. so many other drugs. Mm-hmm. But I had a, I had an overwhelming sensation, from, and I know it was Jessica and Michael. They were just telling me, why are you even thinking this? We've been through this, and I have a relationship. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And they, they've helped me. I've been in recovery for a long time, mm-hmm. and this is the first obstacle that I came across. This was my biggest test, losing my mom. Mm-hmm. But I stayed sober. Like I said in my last interview, I asked for help. I talked to someone, I reached out to the counselors, to the mental health department, and I talked to my mom on the phone for the next seven days until she passed away. 
she didn't get to respond to me. Right. But my sister, my sister held the phone to her ear every time I called, and that was so, so hard to do. I know that it was hard, and that's why I want. This is why you telling me this and telling the listeners is is, is important. It it lets them know this is why you don't want to wind up in prison. You you can't be there for your loved ones. You you can't you don't just lose your freedom. You and and you're not the only one that's in prison. I mean, I'm sure your family would have wanted you there with them as well and you wanted to be there with your family. Oh yes, my mom as her she was getting older and her memory was failing her. She would always ask me, "Oh, when are you coming home to take care of me? You need to come home. They need to let you go." And for me to hear that knowing that I have no chance to go home, it was just breaking me. And that's why I feel I it's a it's a cycle. I mean, it's the ripple effect of what I did, what I participated in Jessica and Michael's murders. It hurt my mom so much. She was so young. And that's the thing. And right now, you know, you've already told the the people that are listening that you feel remorse for Jessica. You obviously, you know, you lost your mom and that you felt hurt and and I don't even know the, the way to describe the feelings that went through you with that. I mean, I've, I've lost both of my parents, so I know how it was with me. And I got to tell you, I'm sure that not only did you feel the, the, the pain from losing your mom, but you probably felt helpless because of where you are. Oh, my God, I really felt helpless. I wanted to go to my mom, like I said, and hold her. Like, she helped me so many times. She's been there for me. My mom never turned her back. She's always taken care of me. And I just wanted to go to her, and I can't. There's so, all I have around me is block walls and razor wire. A whole bunch of other inmates that don't know what I'm going through. And I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. Well, I mean, the good thing is that you actually did go to a counselor, and, and, and surprisingly enough, you did get some help from them. I was expecting you to tell me that, for the most part, the guards just kind of blew you off, but and you're in a decent situation where they knew you and they actually like you. I mean, I've seen instances where guards are just, like, impartial. It's, you know, you're an inmate they're a CO and that's that you know so you lucked out in that respect a little bit hey guys it's Joe Tommaso from the 15 minutes with true crime podcast many people don't know this but I like many others who have been in broadcasting and emergency medical services suffer from hearing loss I'd like to thank my friends at Wear and Hair for developing their Be Hair product line. As I'm hosting and doing production work and even editing my podcast, I am using both the Be Hair Access and the Be Hair Now personalized assistive hearing products. While these devices can function similar to hearing aids and help me to hear my audio work better, they are so, so much better than traditional hearing aids. I can stream my show through them as well as hear TV better. I can fully hear and follow conversations without struggling for people's words. I can even stream music and make phone calls from my mobile phone. The best part is that while helping me hear better, my Be Hair products look great and work like some of the best earbuds on the market. As I said earlier, I have had traditional hearing aids and they cost me thousands of dollars. I also have used similar products that not only cost me a lot more than my Be Hair devices, but they were big and clunky and not as comfortable. Also, they didn't give me the personal hearing experience that my Be Hair devices do. My Be Hair devices are very affordable. Be Hair products are not limited to being used with only Apple devices like some hearing aids and assistive hearing devices. Be Hair products can be used with Apple and most Android devices as well. Be Hair devices can also be used right out of the box using the controls built right into the neck loop on the devices as well. My Be Hair devices have four microphones to assure you can hear everything. You can also choose the best size silicone ear tips as well as the perfect ear hooks so that you can have the best sound that you've heard in a long time. And they're so soft and comfortable you may forget you're wearing them. I know I did. 
But be assured your BeHear devices will not only be secure in your ears, but they will enhance your listening experience. The BeHear Access and BeHear Now devices are Bluetooth 4.2 and have real-time noise reduction and listening personalized just for you. Not only can you hear things better, but your BeHear devices will also filter out outside noise when you need them to. The BeHear Access also has a 250 milliamp hour battery for 8 to 13 hours of active listening and a telecoil to pick up sounds from a loop system if one is available. So the BeHear devices come with free updates. As improvements are made, you simply download them via the app. My BeHear Access can be charged using the included cradle or both devices can be charged using the included micro USB cable. If you're afraid of losing the devices, the BeHear Access and BeHear Now also feature magnets on the earbuds themselves to hold them in place both secure and safe. I also forgot to mention these devices have both voice prompts and a vibration mode for alerts. Your app for controlling your BeHear device as I said earlier, is available for both Android through the Google Play Store or Apple via the App Store and features a hearing test to help set up your devices and fully control all of the features the devices have. My BeHear devices are stylish and they help me hear better. Whether it's live conversations, hearing better in public places, live music, cell phone calls, or just listening to TV, my wife likes this as I'm not blasting the volume on a TV anymore. I can even stream music. I really can't say enough for these devices. Recently, I was also able to hear birds chirping near sunrise. I have not been able to hear that sound even with my hearing aids. And it's not just what you can hear that counts. It's what you're missing out on as well. I highly recommend these devices. If you are interested in purchasing the Be Here Access or Be Here Now, or you just want further information, visit my friends at Wearin' Here online at www.wearinhere.com. Again, that's www.wearinhere.com. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I have a lot of credibility here. Mm. Being a programmer, I don't get into trouble. So when these COs, correctional officers, seen me, they just knew something was wrong, and I don't, I don't get emotional like that very often, and I was just broken. And uh, they were compassionate. They were compassionate, and uh, it's surprised to see some of these correctional officers. They got emotional by me telling them that, and uh, they're people too. They're, I know they have a job to do, but they're people too, and they have emotions and feelings too. Right, get that, and I, you know, and I agree with you a hundred percent. It's just most times they don't let it out in the facility. So, oh yeah, they don't. <laughs> I mean, if I want you to tell the listeners, I mean, this is this is not a life they want. What can they do, especially if they're if you got guys that are hanging out there, whether it be you know gang banging or pulling burglaries or, you know, robberies, what's your advice to them? Why? You have to, I would ask them, why are you doing this? Why are you doing drugs? Why are you stealing cars? Why are you breaking into homes? I've, I have found by, getting, by my own recovery that everything was related to a need that I had. Why I was getting high, there was a need because I felt insecure, I felt afraid, I felt lonely, I felt jealous. There was always something that I was feeling. So I would ask the, the kids and, and other people, why are you doing this? And, and help them work through it to get to the root cause of why. And just answer those questions and, and dig within themselves. If they could be honest with themselves and, and explain what they're feeling, then we could find out the need. And I would work with them. I would try to help them. Talking about it is the key. And if, if you keep breaking into homes, breaking into cars, doing drugs, even if you're not a gang member, you're going to wind up in prison. You could still end up like me. I didn't get jumped into a gang. I was 21, 22 years old when I started hanging out with them. I was hanging out with them because I was getting high with them and I felt secure with them. And because of that, I, I was with them when two murders happened. If you're breaking into homes, you're breaking into cars, you're going to get caught. There's always going to be an end. You're going to get caught. You're going to end up in jail. When you end up in jail, you're going to be forced to do other crimes. And your term's just going to get longer. 
you're going to be right here with me. The other thing that I don't think they realize, too, is once you get in the system, even if you get out of prison, you're going to wind up. You're, you, first of all, in prison, for the most part, you're just a number. Second off, when you get back out and you've been involved in the system, you're just going to be marked. And you can be the straightest person there is out there, but once you get into the system once, when something happens, they're coming to you. Oh, yeah. You can, when you get out of prison, if I was to get out of prison and earn my freedom somehow, I would be on parole. Now, if I had any contact with the cops, the cops come to my house for loud music or I get a speeding ticket, they could violate my parole and I'll end up back in prison. I will always have, it, it is, um, it's like a tail, having a tail. I'm always going to be trapped in the system and you can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of that number. So what Sam is telling you guys that are listening is t- stay straight. Don't get yourself in trouble. Try to hang out with people that are not going to get in trouble because you don't want to wind up like he is right now. Yeah. Um, it, it's sad to say that I did. I had what I called good friends, mm-hmm. and I had some got bad people that I was hanging out with. I'm not even going to go so far as calling them friends because mm-hmm. I don't think friends are going to give you drugs and get you high and ask you to hold their guns for them or help them do crimes. That's not a friend. A friend is there, a real friend is there, is going to help you in a time of need. They're going to listen to you. They're going to help you to get off drugs. They're going to help you play sports. They're going to just be there for you and talk. That's a friend. A friend isn't something that someone that's going to lead you to come to prison or jail. Those are, that's not who you want to hang out with. Sam, I really want to say thank you for what you shared today. We're at like the 13-minute mark. I don't want to get cut, off, get cut off again. I want to thank you for sharing this. I hope to God that somebody listening takes heed in what you just said so that they don't make the mistake. But, I mean, I thank you for giving these kids advice and trying to hopefully save somebody. Yes. Thank you for letting me have the time and the platform to speak to these people. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Wow, he gave us a lot of insight. It's a very sad ending. Gang life. Two young 14-year-olds lose their lives. And a man currently in prison for 21 years and counting on a double life without parole sentence plus 150 years. Thanks for joining me for this edition. If you want to support the show, please donate to paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. Again, that is paypal.me slash Joe Tommaso. And any questions, comments, or suggestions please email me at inside the razor wire at gmail.com again that's inside the razor wire at gmail.com or you can snail mail me at p.o box 162 west haven connecticut 06516 stay healthy stay safe and until next time i'll be seeing you